must do better was the IMF's recent verdict on the Nigerian banking system. Many reforms were highly commendable, it said, but more still needs to be done to strengthen the central bank's oversight. With me is Dr. Alex Otti, CEO of Nigeria's Diamond Bank. Dr. Otti, welcome. Thank you very much. What challenges still remain for Nigeria's banking sector? The challenges that we face today are more uh, in line with the socio-economic challenges that the country faces generally. And uh, here we'll be talking about power, we'll be talking about other infrastructure, we'll be talking about uh, challenges with data gathering, reliable data that is not available. Uh, we also have challenges with the security situation. We have challenges uh, with the very long drawn out judicial process and we also have challenges uh, with uh, the re-emergence of uh, challenge risk assets, that's uh, bad loans. Uh, even though the establishment of the bad bank, uh, Amcon, uh, helped a great deal in sucking up the bad debts of uh, most of the banks. Uh, but uh, as things stand today, there are chances uh, that banks are going to face uh, uh, hard times again with respect to very poor quality risk assets. And how does Diamond Bank work to minimise the impact of these challenges? Diamond Bank uh, has always tried to navigate uh, the challenges um, irrespective of uh, the problems uh, that face them. One of the ways we've done that is in terms of power, we've uh, tried to create alternative sources uh, like the solar and inverters and we power some of our branches without uh, necessarily relying on public power supply or generators that are expensive. Uh, in terms of security, we try to partner the police and the military uh, to ensure that our branches are secured and uh, that our customers are also secured. In terms of data gathering, we because we play very heavy in the small and medium scale enterprises and in retail banking generally, uh, the importance of data cannot be overemphasized. So what we've done is to partner other organizations, international organizations like the IFC, FINA, to help us generate data and uh, uh, research and analytics that will help us in taking decisions that we believe are reliable so that we can avoid uh, bad loans, creating bad loans. We've also tried to set up a system where we also help and and uh, entrepreneurs and people who play in the retail segment of the market uh, in terms of training, in terms of uh, uh, providing them with other advisory services. Uh, so that's what we've done uh, and we've done that well. Nigeria's dependence on its energy sector leaves it highly vulnerable to oil price uh, volatility. So how are banks protected from this? The only way to go for a bank is uh, to also begin to think of diversification. Uh, because uh, the Nigerian economy itself uh, and the managers of the economy are working very hard toward diversifying uh, the base of the economy. And uh, this is more so uh, where alternative uh, sources uh, have been developed by the U.S. and other importers of oil today, uh, such that uh, uh, they have reduced their import of oil. U.S., for instance, which used to be the largest importer of oil uh, from Nigeria, has uh, developed uh, shale gas and uh, today uh, India has become the largest importer of oil. So for uh, the, the banks looking at uh, funding uh, the other parts of the economy other than oil and gas is one of the ways to protect itself. So the need to diversify the economy is a real one. Which sectors do you see driving this change? Nigeria is blessed uh, with a lot of uh, economic activities. Uh, think of uh, agriculture uh, and uh, statistics has it that 70% of the population is employed in the agricultural segment of the economy, even though a large chunk of that is in subsistence level. Uh, but then there is manufacturing, there is uh, uh, solid minerals and uh, transport, power also. There are so many things uh, to fund in Nigeria. I think the problem was that uh, Oil and gas took a prominent space because of the high oil prices. So like you rightly said, uh, if oil prices go down, then the economy will suffer. So uh, uh, banks like ours are looking at all those sectors other than oil and gas. What is Diamond Bank doing to support these businesses? The loan book of the bank is uh, properly diversified. And uh, what we are doing is now to put some energy 
in uh, supporting the micro and small scale enterprises to reduce the level of unemployment in the country and also to ensure that uh, the, the bank is running on a healthy uh, balance sheet footing. Finally, how do you see the economy developing over the next few years and the vision for Diamond Bank within the economy? The economy has been growing uh, at a rate of over 6% in the last five years, so uh, in terms of GDP growth. Um, inflation has come down to single digits as at last month, and it's believed that uh, it will continue in that frame for the rest of the year. Um, the economy uh, has witnessed foreign revenue of uh, about $48 uh, billion, and that covers uh, some uh, 11 months of imports. So we can safely say that the economy is quite healthy. Uh, what is left today is now to link the growth in the economy with development. And uh, that is why we are uh, encouraging support of infrastructure, agriculture, uh, manufacturing and other areas. So for Diamond Bank, we are well positioned to take advantage of the growth that we expect to see in the next couple of years. Uh, our strategy is centered on people and uh, we pride ourselves as having one of the best people in the economy or uh, in the banking industry today. Um, and uh, we have strong propositions and processes, uh, technologically driven, uh, that would uh, support the growth that we expect to see in the next couple of years. Uh, so Diamond Bank is very well positioned to take advantage of that and also to support the economy as it grows and becomes one of the powerhouses uh, by the year 2020. Dr. Otti, thank you. Thank you very much, Nick.